everybody, it's 9.33. Welcome back to Great Day for this Wednesday. And I'm looking forward to uh, this segment here, Jackie, because we're going to talk about something that uh, a lot of people have interest in. Mm -hmm. We have a very special guest, well, of course, Sherry Clark, who you see <laughs> on our Great Day Morning Show with Fork in the Road. But Suzanne Spooner, you are in because you have a special gift that you want to offer people. Yeah, you're from uh, Quantum Healing Hypnosis Therapy. Now, explain what that is. Okay. Uh, Quantum Healing Hypnosis Therapy is a process that was developed by a lovely lady named Dolores Cannon over 45 years. Um, she is a hypnotist, just recently passed over, but um, in her course of 45 years, she did some groundbreaking work that um, originally started as helping people to stop smoking or um, with eating issues, evolved into past life regression, um, kind of spontaneously and before anybody even was talking about it. And it just developed over um, all of these years and thousands and thousands of sessions that she had. She's written over, uh, over 17 books, I think, now. And um, there's a few more in the wings um, that she left for us to get put together. And in that process, it developed as a way to, for people to find um, all answers lie within. We've all heard that, right? Mm -hmm. All answers lie within. And so this process um, uses a facilitator like myself, a practitioner, to gently guide people into a very deep state of relaxation or hypnosis where they have access to all questions that they have about their life. Um, so they will come to a session with literally a list of questions that they want to have answered. Most of the time, um, it's a, two lists, one of life and personal questions and one of health and body questions. So we just, we sit and we talk for a few hours, get to know each other. I explain a little bit about the process and how easy it is to let go and allow um, to uh, relax into that deep state of hypnosis. And um, then we take a little break and I get them nice and comfortable on a table. They go under for about two hours and they um, are guided by their, their higher guidance. Um, some people call it the high self, subconscious, super conscious, um, to exactly a place that helps explain to them why their life has been the way it is and to help start answering that list of questions. So some people would call that a past life. Um, past life is just a concept that a lot of people have heard about, many accept, but I get quite a few people that don't even uh, believe in that, um, that want the experience, or they, they don't know where they stand on that issue. Um, I was going to say, I, I, I could understand with <coughs> hypnosis, you've heard it a lot other, besides entertainment, using it for s quitting smoking, weight loss, things like that. Right. I could understand going in a relax, uh, relaxation state so that your mind can be a little bit freer, so maybe you can be open to things you, ha you don't think on a on a daily mm -hmm. uh, a basis. basis, but right. the idea that you're going into past lives, I think that's where I kind of come to a halt and I'm like, wait a minute, what? Yeah, it's really, it's, it's, it's a phenomenal process. Um, it just, they just go there. Um, and, and again, if, if people aren't comfortable with that term past life, it's completely fine. We just call it a story. So they're guided back to a story that helps explain why things are the way they are. It's, it's just a term. It doesn't really matter in that regard. But, um, but every single time they go to a place where they, it shows them where issues that they're working through or dealing with began. Because if we know where something began at, then we can heal it and move on from it. Um, it just tends to be that, that what happens in these sessions is not originating from the current life. What if people are afraid to go to that point? You know, they just, by the time they get there, um, in the session, they just they seem to be ready. You know, it's a lot of people that are just seeking um, understanding about um, why life has been the way it has. You know, it might be family relationships, or um, it might be addictions, or it might be health issues, and they just are stumped. <clears throat> they don't know why they keep having these roadblocks. And in that deep state of hypnosis, what we're doing is. Um, kind of getting that left brain, that analytical part, that monkey mind out of the way. And in doing so, they're able to access this great source of knowledge that's in all of us. It's, it's in our level of consciousness that 
just below that surface that we deal with Not every day. Capped into. That we don't always want to okay. go into. So yeah. Sherry, where yeah. do you come in to play here? <laughs> Have you done this? I've done it, yeah. And so, and so, um, Suzanne was saying, would you be willing to come with me and share how the experience was? So, as as a, a regular person. Okay. So, what was the experience like? It was awesome and amazing. And the cool thing for me was I went into it with kind of zero expectations. I mean, what Suzanne just described was what, what I had heard, and I thought, well, I don't know, I, I'm not sure, I, I'll go try. And I did, and it was it was awesome. It, it's the, the what was so awesome about it? The way that you feel is it's almost hard. It's it's almost like hard to put into words. So we, great, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, you're so relaxed and you're so engaged. But and I saw stories that I was involved in in other lifetimes. If, if are are you conscious of what you told her? I'm completely conscious, and I was completely conscious the whole time. And, and, so and you the, remember the things you told her? Oh, yeah, yeah. And she also gave me a recording of it, too, so I could okay. also kind of double check. But yeah, you're you're very conscious the entire time. And you're so, you're, you're also, you feel as though you're in control from the perspective of, if I ever got to a point where I didn't want to be there, I could leave. You know, it, like, <clears throat> it's not like, when we see like stand-up shows and, you, and people are doing stupid things, right. it's not like that where you go in and you're at the mercy of someone else and you feel like you're surrendering all your control or all your power. Not at all. In fact, quite the opposite. I felt like I was, I was there. And the cool thing was, is I would see something that maybe would have been an emotional thing. Like I saw some things happen in a past life that might have caused me to feel some alarm, but I didn't feel alarm. I felt like a casual observer. It was like watching something and understanding it and engaging in it, but not getting getting hooked by the emotion of it. Now, did you have a past life experience or were you just recollecting things in your life that you've had right now? I <laughs> believe that they were past life experiences. And I had, there were actually, I had three vignettes of different periods of time of places that I would have absolutely no knowledge whatsoever of. One was in a foreign country and I, w I didn't even speak English. Hmm. <laughs> it was very strange, yeah. But strange. So, did you learn something about yourself then? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, you do. And and don't ask me to go into all of those <laughs> things because we are on TV. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, you do. You have some definite some uh, some unearthing of things. But here's the cool thing: it's never anything you didn't already really know. I mean, like when somebody right. says something to you and about your personality, and it's something you kind of already know. Mm -hmm. It's just reinforcing that. Now, when we mentioned that we were going to be talking to you today, uh, some people said, well, I've heard about people going to their past lives, and we heard, we heard this in a meeting we had yesterday. How come whenever anybody goes to a past life, they're always a prince yeah. or a king? There's never a ditch digger you know, or, or anybody like that. Why are everybody always royalty? That is a really good question. Now, I will tell you, I've done hundreds and hundreds of sessions. There's lots of ditch diggers. There really are, but that is a common question. You know, everybody's Cleopatra, everybody, you know. And Dolores, actually, Dolores Cannon, who, who came up with this process, was instrumental in kind of explaining that. Um, she calls them imprints. And so, say um, Jackie comes into this life and she needs to be um, a, a leader, a strong female leader. Um, imprinted into her soul um, could be the lifetime of Cleopatra. Now that doesn't mean that she physically had the life, but she's able to pull from her deep subconscious those characteristics and qualities of that life to help her move forward in in what she came here to do, right? It's mm -hmm. part of her purpose. So so that is that is an interesting um, concept that comes up from time to time. But when you understand it that way, um, I mean, really, I mean, this kind of gets, if we're going to go real um, universal here, we're all one. So essentially, somehow our energy carries everything. Um, it's all in our DNA on some level, you know, and I don't quite get that, but I see it play out every single time. But there's many times when the lives are what we would call very common lives. But for that person at that time, it really resonates. There's something about that experience that helps them understand themselves in this current life um, even better. And when we tap into what, what I call the high self, um, after those past life experiences, they, they, many things can happen during that time. When we tap into that high self, it is the part of you that knows you better than, than anybody. Um, it's been with you 
for eternity. So it sees your life as Lou as um, from a little bit higher perspective and it understands why you came into this experience and what your purpose is and the lessons that you want to learn. So it's able to give this very unconditionally loving guidance and that's, you know, that's what, what happens. Um, you know, one analogy that Sherry had in her session that was phenomenal for her in the current life <laughs> was that it said um, she likes to grow wheatgrass and in order to prepare that wheatgrass to grow, she puts soil in a tray and she has to shake that tray to get balance. And it says, she, she needs to shake it up a little bit to get some balance in her life. So, I mean, it just always has a beautiful way of mm. giving that grounded advice. Really quickly, I imagine we could talk about this for a really right. long time. You're hearing probably a lot of personal information at the same time. Can you give a brief background of why people would come to you and trust you with something like this? Yeah, sure. It's um, because they want to have answers. You know, some people have been on a spiritual path for a long time. Some people have not any concept of that whatsoever, but they want to know why they're here and what they're supposed to be doing. They just feel like there's something bigger in life that they're, they're meant to know. And so they come and they take the journey for a couple of hours and they leave and they have all these answers and it's truly a beautiful experience. How can people get a hold of you? Um, they can get a hold of me by my website which is Suzanne Spooner QHHT um, and I work out of the Temple for the Performing Arts. There you go. Well, wonderful. Well, thank you for coming in. Yeah, thank you for sharing your yeah, story today. today. Thank you. Interesting concept. <laughs> it is 944. We'll be back. You're watching Great Day live in Des Moines.